You really need someone who specializes in this type of photography and someone who knows how to capture this volume of work. But it's not just a matter of volume, it's also a matter of quality. Anyone can shoot thousands of images, but not anyone can shoot thousands and hundreds of beautiful images that are all ready, ready to publish, marketing ready, good to go. It does not make sense to invest your time, your money, your energy into any shoot for three to five images. It's just a matter of you, the entrepreneur, knowing that you need more than that to properly market yourself and to really show what we need to be showing on your website, on your marketing materials, and across the board, even your brochures. These photos are definitely priceless. Most service entrepreneurs, when they're sharing things on their social media, their advertising platforms, they're usually focusing on sharing their work. But what we're missing there is the you in your business. We're missing the magical you that makes your business different and unique. We are here today to talk about planning a branded styled shoot. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it's something that I've done so many times over the last few years, and it can make a huge impact and a huge difference for your business in ways that you don't necessarily expect. In case you don't know me, I'm Erica Powell of Erica Powell and Co., I am a branding designer. We have a branding design company and also a business coach. The reason we know so much about this is because we either are coaching our clients on how to do this or wishing that our clients had a branded styled shoot and the imagery that would go along with it when we're building their website. So this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And there are so many ways to maximize your branded styled shoots. And I am here today to share my top five secrets. If you're watching on replay, say replay. And we're so glad you're here. Branded styled shoots can be a massive asset for your business. Most service entrepreneurs, when they're sharing things on their social media, their advertising platforms, they're usually focusing on sharing their work. And that is the primary thing that they're sharing. So a luxury travel agent is going to be sharing pictures of trips. A luxury accountant is going to be sharing the end result of the type of business that they're helping you to build. But if you start thinking about other types of service entrepreneurs like wedding planner, photographer, videographer even, your natural instinct is going to be to hide behind the scenes and not really show a whole lot of yourself. This can be for a couple reasons. The first one is usually lack of time. Usually service entrepreneurs are very busy doing the job they do, serving the clients they serve, and that makes a ton of sense. However, you don't need to be doing style shoots every single day. You really only need to be doing them a couple times a year to build up the portfolio that you need to have in order to do this right. Your main go-to is going to be to show your work. But what we're missing there is the you in your business. We're missing the magical you that makes your business different and unique. And even thinking too of performers, musicians, you may be sharing your music or clips of you on stage, but how does the audience get to see behind the scenes? How do your potential clients get to know who you are, not just when you're doing your job, not just with the results that you produce, not just with the designs that you design or the music that you sing, but how do they get to know you? And that is really the essential element that is going to set you apart from competitors. Let's say we put two caterers out there. They're both going to have food that looks good. They're both going to have great descriptions and menu. How does your client choose between you and someone else like you? And that's where branded style shoots and putting yourself out there really makes the difference. A lot of times people who are newer in their business are going to back burner this for as long as possible. There's a lot of confidence that goes along with showing up on camera. And sometimes it's not a natural Thing to just be confident on camera or show up in that way. Sometimes we don't necessarily know how to prep for the shoot or a lot of times we're too busy. 
But just to give you guys some reasons as to why this can be so important, it will definitely set you apart from your competitors, number one. Number two, it's going to take you from service provider to the perceived value of industry leader. And it's going to take you from behind the scenes as a doer to in front of the scenes as an expert. And that's a huge shift that you can't really replicate any other way. If you have people that are lurking at your social media and they're seeing a lot of pictures of your work, it's really easy just to lurk and watch and see ideas. But as soon as they see a photo of you, they're going to say, that's the person behind the scenes. This is something that really is an essential piece of being out there as a public entity or showing up as a leader. It doesn't matter how good your work is, and it doesn't matter how amazing your portfolio is. When you add this layer onto your marketing, it's going to bring you to a whole nother level. It also, as far as building connection, allows your clients to get that behind the scenes peek into your world. People want to see behind the scenes. They want to get to know you. They want to know and connect with you and build that connection. And that's that differentiator between how am I going to choose between these two floral designers? They're both amazing. How do I choose between these two real estate agents? They're both amazing. Yes, but are you not only educating them, inspiring them, motivating them in your marketing? Are you connecting with them? is the question. A lot of people just think of marketing as, let me put my portfolio up there. You're going to show your work, but it doesn't allow you to be seen as the person that people connect to. You really are the magic in your business and you really are the reason why someone's going to choose your company versus another. So there are actually two kinds of brand shoots in my world. One is more of a portfolio shoot where it's specifically focused on your work and building your portfolio. And then the other one is a branded styled shoot. Today, we're going to be specifically focusing on the branded lifestyle shoot, really about you and the behind the scenes of the business owner. So I'm going to go over my top five success secrets today. And I'm really excited to share these with you guys. Over the years, I've done a number of these <laughs> There have been some where I do all the prep work, get ready, do the hair, get the outfit going, have the photographer, even pay the money for the photographer just to walk away with three to five images at the end. And it's a bummer to do this whole shoot and then end up with maybe three to five images. At the end of this video, I'm going to share my favorite with you. But what I would suggest as far as imagery and building a large volume and portfolio of work is to stick with a specialist. So that'll be my last secret. But looping back around to the beginning, my first success secret that I want to cover today is timing. If you're looking for just a couple of portfolio shots or maybe a few headshots, absolutely, you can do it last minute. But if you're going to be creating the type of shoot that I'm talking about today where you get hundreds and hundreds of images instead of three to five, then you're going to need some time because there is planning involved. But what you want to think about as far as timing goes is that timing is everything. For myself, I've learned that a month is not quite enough time for me to prepare everything in order for me to feel really confident and have everything I need at the shoot. Anything between two months and three months is a perfect time frame for me to start planning. That might be different for you. You might be slower or faster than I am, and that's great. I think the things that I'm talking about today and everything that we're going to review, you probably want to have at least 45 days in order to pull off a shoot like this. And that is really important because if you try to create something too quickly, you're going to end up with more lackluster results because you're really not getting what you need out of that shoot. And if you do it right, this can be a major asset for you. So for me, I usually like to give myself two to three months or so at minimum 45 days. If it's anything sooner than that, I start to feel rushed. The other thing you want to look at as far as timing goes is what else is surrounding that shoot. Do you have a lot of client projects around that time? You might want to give yourself a little bit more time then. Do you have a busy season? Then you might want to start planning a little bit earlier. Is there a time where it's a very quiet season? Then you might be able to pull things together a little bit quicker and prioritize this a little bit more. 
you really do have to give yourself time to prepare properly. And if you don't do that, then you're going to end up feeling rushed, frustrated, overwhelmed, and you're not going to be able to show up as your highest self on the day of the shoot. The next one is shoot frequency. So this is a question I get a lot as a branding designer. How often should I do this? I would highly recommend doing at least two shoots every single year, at least, if not more. And my strongest recommendation would be four. Although I understand that some of you are going to be too busy and that may seem impossible, I'm going to say a minimum of two and four would be ideal. So the reason behind this is that you change every single month. Whether you see it, know it, believe it, or don't, you are changing. Your hair may change. The way you dress might change. The way you show up might change. Your energy might change. Who's on your team could change. All of these things are very fluid and they change frequently within your business. Later, when I show you an example of our two shoots, I'm going to show you two shoots from the same year. One, which was in March, so a year ago from right now, and then the other that was towards the end of the year. And the amount that I grew in last year, in 2023, was mind-boggling to me, let alone everyone else. The way I show up, the way I carry myself, the way I look and feel on camera, my hair is completely a different color. So, so much has changed. Both shoots are equally amazing, but the first shoot from March of 2023 looks like a different me than the me that showed up in October of 2023. Okay, so same year, different timing. If you want to be minimalistic of this, I would say two shoots per year is fine because you're going to catch the shift. If you're a totally different person, you've evolved, you've up-leveled, things have changed, you will catch it in the second shoot. If you need more images for your social media in order to show up properly, then you might want to increase that to four. And then what I do want to say, too, for those of you who are like, oh, my gosh, this is so much, like, how am I going to squeeze in two to four styled shoots per year, is that I have to tell you it does not have to be overwhelming as long as you know what to do, as long as you have a step-by-step blueprint, as long as you're educated and informed and you have the tools in your toolkit to do this well, which is what I'm going to teach you today, it does not have to feel or be overwhelming. Success secret number three is volume of deliverables. So we talked about this earlier on about getting hundreds and maybe even thousands of images versus three to five. And why this is important is because you want to be able to not only make sure that you have enough images to play with, to put in your social media, to add texture, to add that layer of the behind the scenes piece to also show you in a variety of situations. So maybe in different outfits, different hairstyles, maybe even a different makeup look could be different outfits, different scenes, like different locations, because how realistic is it for you to have all of your behind the scenes images at your desk? Some of us do live at our desk, so I'm not going to say we don't, but it doesn't really paint the full picture of who you are. Having different locations is going to really add a lot of texture to your shoot and it's going to allow people to see the different versions of you. What does it look and feel like when you're outside? What does it look and feel like when you're in at your desk? What does it look and feel like when you're having a meeting? Those are all different views. And so to really paint that picture and to really show the magic of who you are, that is why we need to have a higher volume. My personal opinion is it does not make sense to invest your time, your money, your energy into any shoot for three to five images. I don't care if that shoot costs $500 or $5,000. Three to five images is not enough. It's just a matter of education and it's just a matter of you, the entrepreneur, knowing that you need more than that to properly market yourself and to really show what we need to be showing on your website, on your marketing materials, and across the board, even your brochures. These photos are definitely priceless. You also want a high volume of photos to choose from. Sometimes there's a little angle of you that's even better. Or sometimes you walk from here to there and your outfit is like a little squishy. But then the next time you do it, your outfit is flowing and looks great. Sometimes your hair is sticking up and you might not even know it. And yes, that can be photoshopped, but Sometimes there's a moment where you are slightly turned on a 45 degree angle and the whole shape of your face changes, right? 
You can see that just me doing that here versus me doing that here. Sometimes you have a better side. Sometimes this side is better than this side. And that really depends on the person. And so by giving yourself time to capture a volume of images, you're actually ensuring that you're going to get your best angles and you're going to show up looking like a boss when you do these shoots. So you want a high volume of photos to choose from. You want to be able to pick and choose the best shots and not just, okay, that one was good. I'm going to show you an example of volume because this I think is really important. As far as volume goes, and I kid you not when I tell you that most branded styled shoots are like three to five images. But scrolling through here, I want you guys to see what is a good volume of photos and how many photos are we looking at here, right? In this particular shoot, we walked away, I believe, with over 600 images, okay? 600 images over that were all good and all ready to use, okay? So just taking a look at these. Now, will I use all of these? No, I will probably never use all of these <laughs> because some of them are slight variations. One's a vertical, one's a horizontal, you might like one angle versus the other better. But the fact is, I get to choose. And I go from being someone who has a choice of one or two or three images to someone who has a choice of hundreds of images, right? And as I'm going, you'll see that there was different scenes. You'll see that we did a lot of different locations, a lot of different outfits. Here I am with my buddy. I got those beautiful photos of Watson last time, which are so wonderful. You're going to see some of my team members here. And we have actually a very large team. I decided last year because we had four shoots, so it would be impossible to get everyone at one shoot. It just wouldn't work. And so for every shoot we did, we chose a few of our team members and made sure that everyone was in at least one shoot so that we had headshots or behind the scenes shots of all of our team members throughout the year. And that just has to do with scheduling and expense too. Like it would be very expensive to fly our team from everywhere into one place all at once. The biggest shoot we had last year was the March shoot. And I think there were five or six of us there. And that is an entirely different kind of shoot. When you have that many people, it literally is all about making sure you have enough time for a few shots of each person. And what we needed towards the end of the year was we needed a lot more shots of me. So right now you're seeing you're seeing Jenna and Larissa here. And then as we continue scrolling, you'll see that our photographer adds me back in. Then there's some group shots, but there's a lot of shots of Larissa and Jenna. And this is also great for our team members because they can choose a headshot and I can also post them on our Instagram. And so our Instagram goes from just portfolio to behind the scenes, including me, and then including our team, because we are a team and it makes sense to show everyone. So I'm just scrolling through. And let me tell you, we are not even close to done yet. We have hundreds and hundreds of images here, different outfits, different locations. And that's it. Okay, but that was over 600. But those were my favorites. So those were the ones I selected not just the number that were delivered. So the volume that was delivered to me for this shoot, there were thousands. You can see this team shoot, there were a, a lot more of us. There were different team members there. This was earlier in the year. There was a lot of different types of locations. There's outside, there's inside, there's restaurants, there's working from home shots. We have some pictures of us wearing like more athleisure clothes and some pictures of us dressed up a little bit more pictures of me like cozy and casual. And let me state the obvious, I am no longer a platinum blonde. So this is exactly what I'm talking about as far as having not just a volume of images to choose from. This is one of my favorite images from that shoot. But some people wouldn't recognize me if I posted that because my hair was platinum blonde at the time. And now my hair is very dark. If you're looking here, you can see that a lot of these photos are amazing, but a lot of them never even got showcased because as we got towards the end of the year, who I was shifted a lot. Okay, so you're just looking here. There's a lot of stuff. We go to the beach in this shoot. We have a lot of outdoor. We have pool stuff. But as you can already start to see, if you know anything about our brand, 
all of these photos and all of the styles and all of the locations and all of the clothes and all of the colors are very dialed in to the type of things that we post on our social media. And the team interactions that you're seeing are very real here. Us laughing on the beach or hanging around or kicking sand or water is all things that we would totally do. So it's very real and very authentic. So just wanted to scroll through and show you guys some behind the scenes and some visuals as to what I mean about volume. And I think this is really important. This is one of my favorite photos of Michelle. So natural, so happy, so in the moment not at a desk, right? What's a headshot really? Is it a headshot of you sitting on a dining room table? Maybe that works or maybe it's you on the beach. Okay. So it just really depends too about your brand. And Michelle sitting here on the computer is just as beautiful. It's just a different vibe. And so there might be a reason or a time for us to use those different types of pictures. This is one of my favorite pictures of me and Michelle and Adrian just laughing on the beach. And that is so, and then you'll see a lot of the team working, doing some of those more work from home shots. There are some really stunning images of the team. I love this one of Adrian, super genuine, really beautiful lighting. Everything is very on brand for us. There's a lot of different scenes and locations, indoors, outdoors, Laptop, no laptop, phone, no phone, kitchen, not in a kitchen, close up of something that I'm doing here, different outfits. Some of the props that we brought are things that we would be creating or making for our clients, some marketing materials. We have a lot of marketing branding types of vibes in here. I specifically wanted to come down to the sequence of Sophia, which is freaking amazing. Just looking at how beautiful she looks in all of these photos. It's fab. There was a couple in here that I was dying over like this one here. It's so Sophia, so genuine, so authentic and doing something that she would do in real life in a beautiful environment. So I think we've seen plenty for you guys to see what I mean by volume. Let me know in the comments if you see the difference. And what I mean by volume versus like a headshot shoot. And then how does that actually apply to marketing? I will just quickly show you our Instagram. Thing. How does this play out? Like where did we use these images? These are styled shoot images. This is a styled shoot image. This is one here. These are actually B-roll clips from the styled shoot. Larissa on our team actually captured a lot of behind the scenes footage of me shooting at the last one. That little clip in the front was something that Larissa caught. Styled shoot image. Styled shoot with our family. Styled shoot here. So you can see that this really does add like a very personal layer. This is one of my favorite reels that I've ever made. And this one has a lot of little clips that Larissa took and I thought they were fantastic. So she was just basically behind Sophie, our photographer, taking B-roll clips. And that was really awesome. Okay. So you can see styled shoot here and you can see my hair was a lot lighter back then than it is now. So if I hadn't had that quarter four styled shoot with the new hair, I would be posting things that didn't really look like me anymore. So that was secret number three, which was volume. And so I really wanted you to see the volume of deliverables that I want you to have from a shoot. It's one of the most important things. And you can imagine how much marketing fuel that gives you and not just fuel for social media, but also if you need to make a brochure for your services or you need to put together a new client onboarding collection packet or something like that, you have something to pull from that's personal and you don't have to use generic stock images that are not really related to you or your business. This one is probably the most important, but secret number four is powerful prep because a lot of the secrets that we've talked about until now are just things you need to know. How do we prep for a shoot like this? How do we make sure that we make the most of a shoot like this and that we're going to get the most photos and the best images possible? And there are different ways that I want you to think as far as prep. The first one, is locations. So you just saw two of our shoots and you saw that there were probably four to five locations at least, if not six for each of those shoots. I want you to think of a shoot like a marathon day. 
It is going to be a full day for you. (laughs) You are going to be tired and cranky by the end, and you are going to be laying on your couch wanting to be burritoed in a blanket and fed from a spoon of some delicious ice cream, and you're going to be done. Trust me, you will. But it will be worth it because that's how you can consolidate from needing to take photos every day or like multiple times per week and to two to four times per year. Having several locations allows it to look like it was shot over several days. So there is a trick to that. I would say you would want to have a minimum of three to five locations. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean you have to go to three to five different locations out there in the world? No, it could be one is your office, two is your kitchen, three is your living room, four is a restaurant, five is an outdoor setting. The last shoot that we did from the end of last year, my car was actually a location for a shoot. Why? Because I feel really good when I'm in my car and I didn't have any pictures of it and I thought it's just a fun side of me. Like when I get in my car, I have this feisty energy that makes me and I wanted to capture that. So it doesn't need to be very far away. It doesn't need to be super different. It could be your office and your kitchen could be two or even your bedroom, depending on the type of business you have. If you want photos of you journaling, like you saw, I had a laptop in one of the bedrooms in in one of those shoots. And I said that was one of my favorite images of me like ever, because that's what I would do. Like I would be sitting in my bed with a hoodie on and sure enough, it became one of my favorite images. So you want to think about it. For each shoot, you want to choose three to five locations. Maybe even six would be really great. So when you're picking your locations, you want to think about what time of year is it that I'm having the shoot. If it was Texas, where I live, in August, I would certainly not be including an outdoor location as part of my shoot. Unless I already knew that the weather was going to be good or we were starting extremely early in the morning. I've lived in Texas and in Florida. There's just no way I'm going outside in August. Or if I'm directly in a pool, that would be fine. And if I'm going to be doing that, I'm going to put that probably at the end of the day or maybe in the very beginning of the day before it gets too hot and where I have time to touch up. That's another thing to think about is giving yourself time to touch up throughout the day as well. So you want to think about the weather, the time of year. This is something also people don't necessarily think about. What if you want to plan to have a shoot in a Airbnb or a restaurant or a public place and they have all these Christmas decorations up? That could be great for that time of year, but not for all year. So something to think about. You also want to think about crowd volume or privacy. So for me, I am not really an extrovert. I am not the kind of person that wants to go into a crowded location where a lot of people are and strut my stuff. It's just not my thing. So for me, I actually often choose an Airbnb with really beautiful aesthetics. Those two shoots that you just saw, there were two Airbnbs that were shot there and one of the locations was my home. But I like to choose locations and like Airbnbs based on aesthetics, which I'll get into in the next piece. But you just want to think about privacy. I would rather be by myself on a beach without a massive crowd around me. So in that way, you're going to have to think about, okay, what beach can I go to where there's not a lot of people around? With our outdoor shots from the last shoe, I specifically chose a part of our neighborhood that was out of nature, but it was a little bit removed. And the time of day that we were doing it on a weekday, all the kids were at school and people were at work. So it gave me a little bit more privacy. So those are the kinds of things you want to think about when choosing your locations and choosing what time of day each of those locations are shot in. And then indoors and out, you probably want to have some of both. You want to keep your outdoor stuff either real early before it gets hot or late in the day. If So it doesn't matter if your hair gets a little wild by the end. The second piece about powerful prep would be aesthetic and vibe. I'm going to share a Pinterest board with you as far as planning out what the aesthetics or a vibe of a shoot could look like. And I'm excited for this because this is a big part of my planning and prep. This is a real big piece for me about how a shoot is going to look and feel. This has to do with the location we're choosing. It has to do with clothes that we're going to be wearing. It has to do with types of poses and different things that we're going to be doing in the shoot. You can see here that I have got to love Pinterest for this, but I have this main Pinterest board and then I have different sections of the board because I like to stay organized. We had a style inspo section of the board for our team because when you're coordinating a lot of different team members with different outfits, it's important to be able to uh, show them what the vibe is. Let's just start with this. 
just looking through here, our company, we're working from home, we're relaxed, we're casual. Most of the time, realistically, we're wearing athleisure and leggings and hoodies and things like that. But also for our brand, we wanted to be a little bit beachy. We had a pool scene. We had a beach scene in the, one of the earlier team shoots in the year. And so the other thing that we were looking at here is color and the types of colors that fit in well with our brand on social media. You can see right here very clearly, and I think this is a great way to just flip back and forth and see this, is that we have a pretty strong color palette for our brand. We have some turquoises, we have some earth tones, we have some greens, we have some blues. It's just like the vibe and the style of our brand. So going back here, you can see that everything that's here would fit in so well with that. And nobody's wearing red. It's just not part of our brand. If red is part of your brand, that's perfect. We're not wearing hot yellow. We're not wearing highlighter green. It's just not part of our aesthetic. It could be part of yours though. So just something to think about. We like having a little style inspo section and then showing like a variety of looks that could work, whether it's more casual or more dressed up. And I think we told our team members to choose two to three different looks so that they could mix it up a little bit. But it's a great reason to have a couple different looks is because you actually may like the way you look in one of those outfits, but not the other. So it will actually save you a ton from maybe picking an outfit that you didn't love as much. At least you have variety now in the volume. So also, I usually do a hair and makeup ideas board. And this was really just for myself. I like this type of look. You can see I'm wearing that type of look now. It's not essential, but it is helpful, especially if you have a hair and makeup artist. It's very helpful if you have three potential segments for our last shoot. So this is the October shoot and this is the team. So looking here, you'll see that I pinned ideas about the types of locations within my house that I wanted to show. This is super, super helpful on the day of because you can go back to this just on your phone and say, did we get the shot yet? So you're seeing here, this is what I really want to show you is these types of situations and different poses and different looks that we're doing. We're actually coming from our inspiration. Look right here, this perfect example. This is a shot that we thought would fit in really well for our brand that would give a bit of texture. And here we have Jenna sitting on the floor with her computer and her phone. Okay, so just to give you an idea... And this is extremely helpful just to have a guide like this and the types of shots that you want for your social media. That was the team section of the shoot. So I wanted to have a different section of my Pinterest board so that during that part, we could pull that part up. Now, here's the Erica part of the shoot. Okay, so we've got water shots. We've got outdoor shots. We've got some indoor power poses that could be more headshot like We've got outside walking by the pool a couple times. We have in the pool splashing. So that gives you an idea of what I was trying to capture. And then if we were to go into the actual delivered images, a lot of these power shots or these walking shots or these nature shots were directly inspired from those Pinterest inspirations and wanting to catch like a certain angle and a certain vibe. And then a lot of them came from organically as we were shooting I trust my photographer and I have decided that I don't care what she tells me to do. I'm going to do it because she knows what the camera is seeing. And if she tells me to lean down and look into the camera and it's not something I would normally do, I just do it. Because at this point, the fact that she could catch me looking really beautiful like this, I just know that she knows what she's doing. But look, this came from her just saying, go over to that tree, put your hand on the tree and look at the water. I trust her a million percent at this point because I would never know. And that was not part of my plan to have an image like that. That just evolved. So part of it is prep. And then part of it is just playing with the photographer and trusting them. Okay. Two, like this. That's a beautiful shot that I probably never would have thought of or come up with. I was just flowing and playing with the photographer. And now I wanted to show you down in here. There's a lot of water shots, right? This was a big part of the shoot last time was like being in the water. And that you can see is directly related to a lot of these shots in the beginning. And it just depends too on what is the final outcome. One thing that I really wanted was some of those like walking by the pool shots. So I really wanted this kind of vibe right here of me walking by the pool. 
And that was an important shot for me. But remember how I talked to you guys about volume and that maybe I like this shot better than this one. Maybe I like this one even better. So that's why it's important to work with a photographer that is getting volume. Because if I were to just choose one of those, it might not be my favorite. You can see which ones I've favorited. And there's so many other beautiful ones. This one is another beautiful one as well. Uh, And that is, I have no inspiration for that just came spur of the moment. But just to give you an idea. So aesthetic and vibe. I like to pin ideas. I like to pin poses. I like to pin outfits. I like to pin makeup and hair. I like to pin locations. And so as you can see now, you see how doing that prep work translates into the shoot. I can show up prepared and have images that I want to shoot and show my photographer and say, I really want to get this one. We didn't get this one yet. We didn't get the car one yet. We've got to get that. And so it's a great reminder on the day because it is a really busy day and you want to make sure that you have a visual reminder. So aesthetic and vibe too is thinking about the color palette of your location. So as I was picking the location for our March shoot in 2023, I chose a beach house that was light, bright, airy, had a lot of natural light and had that beachy vibe. So my house is, as you can see, like very similar in aesthetic, but it's a little more like natural luxe. There's a lot of like naturey things. It's a little boho, but it has the same vibe. And so it, even though those photos were shot in an Airbnb, it felt like our brand. Same thing with the Airbnb that I picked for the last shoot. It was more modern. It was very edgy, but it still felt like us because it was neutral colors and it had the vibe of our team. So the last thing you want to think about in terms of aesthetic and vibe and just final product is also who do you want to have at your shoot? Is it going to be just you? Are you going to bring in some clients for the shoot? Are you going to have your family in the shoot? Are you going to have pets? Are you going to have team? How do you want to do that? And that's a part of the planning process. And then, of course, if you have people flying in, you'll have to plan all that travel as well, which is why I'm saying like two to three months is reasonable. And if you have a lot of people in your shoot, you also have to think about timing for them and not just for you. And then the two other pieces that are all part of secret number four, powerful prep, is your wardrobe. So we already looked at the locations, choosing three to five locations. Now I'm going to tell you one to two outfits per location, at least one per location, if not two. And I'll do another visual example because it's helpful. You may find that you really like these pool shots, but that maybe some of these you would want in a lighter outfit. And then some of them might be better for a different use in a darker outfit. I do try to put in at least one to two different outfits for each. And now you'll see we actually did three because I had a white, a blue, and a black. And I ended up not liking the blue at all. So even though these are beautiful images and I love the images, I just didn't like how they felt compared to the white and the black. And so that's something that is really helpful. You're there doing the work anyway. You might as well change a couple of times and get a different variety of images. Now, how are you going to organize and manage this? Super simple. You either take part of your closet and push everything to the side and give yourself a little section of your closet dedicated to this shoot. Or you can get one of those rolling wardrobe racks. It's helpful when you're planning a shoot because you can pull that thing out and you can line up all your outfits on it. You can line up your shoes related to which outfit, your jewelry you can hang on the hanger, your accessories that might go with each outfit, you can put it together. So what you want to do is you want to think of it like a production in a way and you want to prepare. These are like costume changes and is it extra? Yes. But will it get you the best results possible? Yes. Yes. So if you have three to five locations, you're really thinking of three to 15 outfits. But realistically, one per location is probably plenty. If you have less locations, you can do more outfits per location and vice versa. Next step, are you going to buy all those things brand new? Absolutely not. (laughs) How do you plan your wardrobe is you're actually going to go shopping in your closet first. You're going to take that section of closet that's dedicated to your shoot or that wardrobe rack and you're going to go shopping in your house first. Pull out everything that's in the color that you think might be a fit. Try it all on. Look in the mirror. See what you feel good in, which is a huge part of the equation. And then line up all those outfits as you're choosing them. And you can choose more outfits than you actually might wear during the shoot. 
there might be some that you're in the mood for that day and that you want to throw on and some that you don't really feel like wearing that day. So just line them all up in your little section of your closet or on your wardrobe rack. Put your accessories, shoes, and jewelry in with those. And that's really helpful. This is a tiny minor thing, but sometimes I'll take like the jewelry for one look and put it in a plastic bag and punch a hole in it and hang it over the hanger. So that way when I'm changing, I'm not having to think, oh, what earrings am I going to wear with this? Because you won't have time. (laughs) on the day of, if you're doing it right, you want to maximize your shooting time and not your changing time. After you go through your closet and you look at everything you have, then you can look for holes. I have this outfit and I love it, but I don't have shoes for it. Or I have these shoes and I love them, but I don't have an outfit for it. And all of those types of scenarios, that's when you go shopping for that particular thing. You don't have to shop for everything at once, just only what's missing. And there will be some times that you might not have to shop at all. Like in your first shoot, you might not have to shop at all. By the time you get to your second shoot, you might have to fill in some holes. My two favorite sources for buying things are Shein, really helpful. (laughs) Things are really reasonable and you just have to order with enough time in advance. And usually you have to order more than you want because sometimes the things don't look so great in person, but usually it's a great value overall. Amazon is also a friend of mine and you can find things that don't have to be extra expensive but still look really good and give you a variety. The last step of prepping powerfully is prepping your energy. And this is something that a lot of people don't have the time to do, which is also why I'm suggesting you give yourself 45 days-ish to three months to plan. Because if you're picking your outfits, choosing your locations, putting everything on paper, making Pinterest boards, creating a timeline for the day, doing all that stuff, and then you get to the shoot and it's the day of and now you're already tired, not a great way to start, especially not a marathon shoot of a day. So prepping your energy, what do you have to do for that? I would highly recommend getting good sleep the night before. Good sleep is also helpful for your mood. Showing up centered and showing up as your highest self is really important. You do also want to think about food before you start the shoot, food during the shoot, food after the shoot, because you are going to be hungry. This is definitely a marathon day. I will give you one mini tip related to food, and this is just a little recipe that I came up with recently, and I really love it, but I make a protein shake that has my favorite protein powder, which is katava, and then I also add a keto yogurt to it, which is an additional 15 grams of protein. That will keep me going for hours. I do try to keep snacks on hand just in case like there isn't time to stop and eat lunch, but I usually do try to add a lunch into a shoot day. And then the last piece is stamina. When you're doing a shoot like this and you're trying to get hundreds of images in a day, you need to be aware that you are a human being and you are going to get tired. So you need to build in outfit changes, breaks, food stops, moments of location changing, downtime, maybe someone else is driving. For me, when we do our shoots, doing shots of the team is a really great time for me to recharge. Giving yourself little pockets of recovery time throughout is really helpful. And we're not talking about video shoots today. That's an entirely other day. But I remember I once did a shoot weekend with my friend Kenny. That was a video shoot. And I think we did two days of shooting and we did 10 different locations, at least if not 15 and 30 outfits. That's a stamina moment. That's just like having an event or hosting a party. It's a lot of work. So you just have to make sure that you have enough rest food, energy, fuel, all the things in order to get through that day. Not just get through it and look exhausted on camera, but get through and shine on camera at the same time. So don't forget to prep that energy. My last secret is choosing the right photographer. So you can do all of those things right that we talked about so far. And if you don't pick the right photographer, trust me, you're going to be kicking yourself later because that is probably one of the most important and essential, crucial ingredients. Now, there have been times where I've had to plan a shoot elsewhere. Like I was traveling on a trip with our family and I had to do a shoot in um, Turks and Caicos. And I really wanted some family images because it was a beautiful resort and I wanted to capture that. That's a little different. Like you're going to an island where you can't necessarily fly a photographer in there. You've got to see who's around, who's local. And so the kinds of questions you need to ask related to that are simple questions like, How many different locations or scenes will we be able to do in the shoot? How many different outfit changes will I be able to have? 
how many photos do you deliver after the shoot? That is the magic question. Because if they say three to five, that's a big no. That's something that you don't want. You really need someone who specializes in this type of photography and someone who knows how to capture this volume of work. So when you're going to a, a location that's not home or we have less choices, something like, say, when I did the Turks and Caicos shoot, I really had to choose the best of the best that was local and the person who I felt like made sense based on the options that were around. You don't have unlimited choices sometimes in those situations. And she did an amazing job. But I found that the magic question of asking how many images are you going to deliver at the end of the shoot was the one that led me to the right photographer because every other photographer said three to 10 images edited and that's it. And she was the only one that said, I get what you're trying to do, somewhere between 40 and 100 images. And that's about normal. Now, abnormal or (laughs) superhuman is going to be who I would recommend for you guys. And I'm going to tell you about that in a second. For a normal photographer who is relatively familiar with this type of work could be 50 to 100 images. But if you want a full day and the best images and you want hundreds of images like I'm talking about right now, then my top recommendation would be workplay branding. I love workplay branding, and I probably could not talk about them enough. We do have a referral link if you guys want our referral link. The reason I'm saying this is because the type of work that goes into doing this type of shoot, unless you are specifically trained for this, and if that's you and you know how to deliver this volume of images, then you are golden and you should totally be doing this for people and offering this. But it's not just a matter of volume. It's also a matter of quality. And that is a very difficult balance to find when it comes to delivering a high quality of work and a high volume of work at the same time. Anyone can shoot thousands of images, but not anyone can shoot thousands and hundreds of beautiful images that are all ready, ready to publish, marketing ready, good to go. And the reason I recommend workplay branding is because they are trained in this. They go through training to know how to even withstand an eight-hour shoot day. They know how to maximize the situation, maximize the light, maximize the time of day, maximize the time you have, maximize the outfit changes. They're literally trained in this. And the reason I'm saying workplay branding too is this is what they do. They help with so much more than just the images on the day. They will help you with the prep. They will help you choose the locations. They will put together a shot list for you where it shows all of your inspiration images. They'll take your Pinterest board and they'll put it into a shot list. They'll create a schedule and then they'll give you the option to change things. And you can see it on paper. These are the types of things we're going to be doing. If I want to maybe change this scene, like I don't have time for the family scene in this shoot, but I want to do my car scene. You'll be able to do that. You'll be able to tell them to rearrange. Like I want my pool scene first to get it over with. And I want my Airbnb scene last because I want to end the day there or whatever. They'll work with you on that. And then they also have upgrades to where they'll help you with outfit planning or styling or any of those additional things that you could want. And I really do love working with them. Once you work with them and you have a specific photographer that you love, I would recommend requesting that same photographer every time so that your brand imagery is consistent And the other thing that's really cool about them is that each client gets their own editing style that they apply to all of your images. So each business that they work with, they actually develop a style based on the style and the finished look that you want to have in your social media feed. When you choose a good photographer, whether it's workplay branding or you're asking the right questions and you choose a photographer with the right answers, totally up to you either way you really do ensure the success of your shoot. When you choose the wrong photographer, you really do ensure that all of the work, all of the financial investment, all of the time investment is not going to be the outcome that you want it to be. All that being said, you guys, I do actually have a photo shoot prep and planning downloadable. So if you want that, we will put a link to the planning workbook in the description so that you can find it there. If you have questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. I would also love to know if you guys are watching on replay and what your favorite takeaway was today. I know there was a lot of information, but what stood out to you? What did you love the most? What was an aha moment or something you didn't think of before? Let us know in the comments what you loved most. And I would love to wrap this up with 
the why. Why is this important? It will 100% help you to stand out from other businesses like yours. Tell me in the comments if you want this. I can also do training sessions about portfolio shoots, which is really more about capturing your work, whether you are a performer and you need to capture that, or if you are a designer, there's a, a specific type of shoot for portfolio work. So if you want another video on that, put portfolio shoot in the comments and I will definitely put that in on our schedule. So as far as this branded shoot, the lifestyle shoot, why are we doing this? To stand out from the competitors, to be the magic behind your brand and to come out from behind the curtain, so to speak, and to show up and magnetize the people that you want to work with to set you apart. So question here, would you recommend to change up the vibe for each brand shoot you do during the year, professional wear or casual? I would say actually use a variety of looks or a variety of vibes within each shoot. So if you're choosing three to five locations and one to two outfits per location, just think about, okay, if I'm having three to five locations, some can be casual, some can be cozy, some can be a little more elevated. Same thing with outfit to go along with that. But even if I'm in my office, I might be wearing a hoodie on my computer or I might be wearing something a little bit dressier. That's why I recommend one to two outfits per location because you can mix it up a little bit. Stella said that photographers always think of themselves last. I honestly think that's the truth of most service entrepreneurs. You're always putting clients first. And when it comes to marketing, you're always thinking of your work first and you last, but really you are the magic. That was super fun. I hope you all got some good info from that. And again, let us know what you love the most. Amy is saying here she loves seeing teams working on a product. Absolutely. That's a really great layer to add into your shoe. And actually, we did have a bit of that in one of our shoots. And I really liked that too. That's a great point, Amy. Like our company, we do branding, website design, social media management, and coaching. And so there were photos of me on my phone talking as if I'm talking to a client or on a computer as if I'm Zooming with a client. We actually had this segment of one of our shoots where our team was all gathered around the table and we had marketing materials that we had created from a client and we were passing those back and forth. And those actually came in really handy for our collections brochure. Let me show this for you. This cover on our collections brochure is me and Adrian and some of our work in one of our brochures and some of our creative pieces there. And then as I come down here, this is from another styled shoot, more of a texture image. This is from a styled shoot. All of these photos of our beautiful team. This is our team at a styled shoot. How beautiful. And you can see like the authenticity that this brings to our collections brochure, right? This is us. This is the real us behind the scenes. This is what we look like. That's me. That was a styled shoot image from the last shoot. That's me on a computer. And so that adds a lot of authenticity to it. That's me work on one of our clients' social media and looking at that. So that gives you an idea. This is one that actually Adrian created. She basically made that image, but here's me and Adrian there. So you can see how that adds. There's Larissa. It just adds like a very authentic layer to our collections brochure. So hopefully that is helpful. Thanks for pointing that out. But yeah, photos or images of you in action or collaborating with a team are definitely a layer to add for sure. Anyways, I hope you guys had a lot of fun today. It was great to see you all. And I'm so glad to have you all here. And if you are watching on YouTube and you want to be behind the scenes watching these master classes live with us, you want to be able to ask questions while we're on live and integrate what we're talking about into your own business or ask questions about the topics that we're teaching behind the scenes in our group, check out the link to the Rich and Joyful Entrepreneur. And we would love to see you there. So fun to see all you guys. I hope you have an awesome day and I hope you are ready to plan your next stellar styled shoot and I will see you all soon. Bye guys.